Hello and welcome. Uh, Bruce Fulton here, School of Information, University of Arizona. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can make the background of an image transparent. Uh, and there are a few reasons you might want to do this. Uh, and usually it's when you want to combine uh, two or more images in um, uh, a photo editing uh, application. Uh, for example, you might be doing a flyer, you might be combining a couple of um, photographs, uh, and it's a situation where you have one image uh, that you want to lay over another, uh, and you need to make the background of the top image transparent so that you can see uh, only the object you're interested in in the top image, uh, and you want the background image to show through. Uh, and this is called making um, a, a, the background image transparent or making a couple transparent. Uh, and there are a few different ways that you can do this. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate this um, using the um, uh, application Pixlr. Uh, this is a, a free application. It has a subscription model as well that unlocks some advanced features, but uh, it's free and available uh, on the web. It's a web application. Uh, and it duplicates a lot of what you find in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is a wonderful tool. I use it myself, but it's very expensive. Uh, and the free application, um, uh, Pixlr, uh, duplicates a lot of the functionality of Photoshop. Uh, and even if you do uh, want to unlock some of the uh, advanced features uh, and uh, pay their subscription price, uh, it's reasonably priced. Uh, let's bring that up now uh, and take a look at it. Uh, they have actually two applications. One is a, a um, stripped-down version that has simple functionality. It's easier to use. Uh, we're going to take a look at the advanced uh, features uh, in their uh, e-program, uh, so we'll open that up now. And let me tell you uh, exactly what we're going to be looking at. I'm going to open up an image here uh, that we're going to use as our background image. Uh, this might be um, your, your primary photograph uh, or a background image or something. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to overlay a couple of different uh, photographs on top of this uh, to demonstrate the techniques. Uh, the first one we're going to take a look at is a simple logo. And I'm going to open up um, the Firefox logo here. Uh, and as you can see, this is a logo and it's got a white background on it. And what we're going to want to do is make that white background transparent. If we were just to drop this on our background um, the way it is, and what I'm going to do to show you is select all, uh, then I'm going to go edit copy. Uh, I'm going to go to our first image, uh, and I'm going to go edit um, paste on top of that. You can see what the problem is. We've dropped our logo on here, but it's got this white background, and that doesn't really look like what we want. So let me undo that. Uh, and we'll go back to our uh, logo here again, and let me undo the select. Uh, so now we've got our image here. The way we get rid of the background in this case uh, is we use our um, wand tool. Let me first unlock this. Uh, we use our wand tool uh, and make sure we have start out with a low tolerance, and I'll explain that in a second. So we've got our wand tool, and the, what the wand tool does is selects uh, all the similar colors in an image. So we just click that. Uh, and now we've got um, uh, a line here around all the colors, and the white is selected. Um, we want to invert the selection um, so only the Firefox logo is selected. Uh, and then what we want to do uh, is we want to edit, uh, copy this. Uh, so we've copied the Firefox logo. Now, there are a couple of ways we could go here, but I'm going to assume we want to reuse this. So I'm going to go File, um, New Image. I'm going to go over here. There, there are, are, are a few different predetermined um, canvas sizes you can use. This is a fairly small logo, so I'm going to do um, 300 by 300. We're going to call this Firefox logo. And we're going to save it as a PNG. And I'm going to put that on the title here just to remind me what it is. 
Uh, we want to save it as a PNG because the transparency color isn't supported in a JPEG, so we need to save it as a PNG in order to save the transparent color as a background. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to create that. And um, then we're going to do edit, paste to get the logo in here. And now we're going to save that. Oops, hit the wrong button there. File, save. We're going to save it as a PNG. And we're going to go ahead and download that. And we're going to save it um, here where I'm doing this demo. Okay, we've saved that. Now we can close that. Now let's go back to our original. Um, and now we can um, go to this one. Oops. And we can do select all. So we've selected this uh, logo. We can go back to our first image and do edit, paste. We're going to unlock this so we can play with it. Uh, and now uh, with our uh, move tool selected, we're free to paste this where we like. So that's the way we get rid of the uh, simple background color. Now I said I was going to um, talk about um, the select tool, um, the, the, um, on the wand tool, the tolerance tool. Um, when we've got a, a, a pure white color like this, and we very frequently do, um, uh, we don't need to worry about the tolerance tool too much. But if, if this white color uh, had a kind of a mottled appearance, uh, maybe it was darker, lighter in, in some areas, we could play around with a tolerance tool to raise it. And, and this would um, account for those slight differences in background color, so it, it would give us some tolerance as to how much that background color could vary. So if your background color, uh, if this were a photograph instead of a logo and that background were a little bit muddy or the, the background was varying a little bit, you can play around with that tolerance tool uh, and that will, that will help take care of it. Now let me go to our second example here um, and I'm going to, uh, let's see, let's, let's just go ahead and, and get rid of this just to clean up our um, and we can get rid of this one as well. Um, uh, let's take the case where we have a photograph, a complicated photograph, uh, and, and this technique is not going to work because the background is just a little bit too confusing. So let me open up our second one here. Uh, and I'm going to open up this picture of um, Pick our size here. So this uh, um, uh, image of, of the cat here, uh, my cat Dory, uh, is is way too complicated to be able to um, uh, use that that um, uh, magic wand tool because there's there are way too many differences in the in the colors uh, of the background. Um, now there there is a cutout tool, um, and it used to be very tedious to try to cut something like this out. You would have to to open it up and, and magnify, and maybe get a, a pen tool, and kind of go around here and, and and trace all around this. And it used to be very tedious. But there's a brand new tool available both in Pixlr and in Photoshop that uses artificial intelligence to figure out what the main object is. This isn't the advanced um, subscription model, but if you're willing to uh, watch a little bit of uh, an advertisement um, uh, for about 15 or 20 seconds, um, uh, you can get at it. Uh, and if you use the cutout tool, um, it's this AI auto button here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and you'll see what, um, what happens. Uh, and uh, machines are doing their thing, please wait. Uh, and it's going to do the calculation. Uh, it's a premium uh, tool. After the ad, you'll be able to use this premium content feature. And if you want to skip the ads, uh, you can upgrade your account. Uh, and so um, uh, the ad um, uh, is playing. Um, I've got it blocked with an ad block just for purposes of this video. Uh, but you should be um, a good player uh, and uh, uh, watch the ad 
uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and continue. Uh, and you'll see that it very intelligently has um, um, uh, cut out the cat and eliminated the uh, background. So now uh, we can um, uh, proceed as we did with the other one, which is um, uh, to select all. Uh, we can do a file, um, save. Uh, again, we want the PNG. Uh, we can do save as. We can do, um, let's give this an intelligent name here. Okay, now we've got Dory PNG. We can get rid of this one. We can open image. We can get Dory PNG. We can select all. We can go to um, our other image. Let's do edit copy. And now we do edit paste. And now we've got our now we've got our cat pasted onto uh, our image. So uh, those are the two ways that we can get transparent backgrounds uh, and um, uh, using the layers here. Uh, and I won't go into a discussion of layers um, in in this uh, video, uh, but there are several good videos out there that will discuss um, layers. You know, uh, being able to move them back and forth. Uh, and, and you have to understand that these are layers, they're stacked in order, uh, you can move them around. Um, but this video does show you how you can get those transparencies two different ways, um, using the uh, wand tool if you have a, a fairly consistent, even background, uh, and then using the new um, uh, artificial intelligence cut. Um, the artificial intelligence works better on some things than others. You'll have to experiment around uh, where you have a clearly defined um, central object, um, it works well. Um, the more diffuse the objects are, the more confusing. Um, there are situations where it works better than others, but all in all, it's an amazing new tool and it saves a lot of work over some of the old ones. So I hope you have found this video to be worthwhile. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the uh, comments below. Uh, and thank you for watching.